So if you didn't already know, who do you think has the most subscribers on YouTube? Miley Cyrus, Justin Bieber, Ray William Johnson? Nope, it's this guy. <laughs> Felix Arvid Ulf Gelberg, aka PewDiePie, is a 23-year-old Swede who is the current king of YouTube with more than 12 million subscribers. And he makes Let's Play videos. Part Mystery Science Theater, part Ebert and Roper, Let's Play videos are just recorded run-throughs of people playing games. They can be funny or heartbreaking, long or short, kind or downright He's nasty. He's so cute! Oh, I love funny. Oh no, no buddy. And if it was just PewDiePie, that'd be one thing, right? But he's not alone. Let's Play videos are huge. Like Super Bowl plus World Cup huge. Like, I shouldn't even have to tell you how huge they are huge. But I will. Say it for me. Huge! So let's look at the numbers. Well, there's PewDiePie with over 12 million subscribers and over 2 billion views. Then there's Toby Games and Captain Sparkles, Syndicate Project, C Nanner, NerdCube, and the hundreds of other crazy popular Let's Play creators. Yes! It's working. Oh no, I've dropped it. That's more subscribers than Canada has people. Oh well, I guess that's all right. And most of these videos aren't exactly short either. Most Let's Play videos run 10 to 30 minutes and lots of them run several hours. But wait a second, am I really saying that there are tens of millions of people watching other people play video games for hours at a time? Yes, yes I am. So I think it's fair to ask, why have Let's Play videos gotten so huge? Well, for starters, there's money. Video games, they're a pricey habit, and spending $60 at a clip isn't always an option. Let's Play videos let you experience a game in an entertaining way for free. you never seen a horse ride a motorcycle before. And of course, there's strategy. Turning to others for advice is a tradition as old as games themselves. Back in the day, we called Nintendo Power for help, or we checked out IRC channels or game facts. Now, with Let's Play videos, you can watch someone struggle through an entire game before you have to. And most importantly, it's pure entertainment. Put simply, the best Let's Play creators are just people you want to hang out with. I believe I can fly. Put your hands in the air. Put your... What? Yeah, but still, there's got to be something more. YouTube is the biggest thing in pop culture right now, and Let's Play videos are the biggest thing on YouTube. Why? Here's what I think. Gamers have been a lost and lonely breed for quite some time, and now they can finally reconnect with each other. Think about it. When games first came on the scene in arcades, it was a social experience. It was dark, it was dingy, but it was an inexpensive place to hang out with other people. Gamers huddled around Pac-Man and Donkey Kong every night of the week, and by the end of the 80s, there were over 10,000 arcades across the United States. My local arcade even took report cards in exchange for tokens. Thanks, challenges. But then consoles came onto the scene, and by the end of the 90s, most gaming was done in the home. Man, I think he's permanently attached. With the exception of Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, most gamers were playing in bedrooms and basements, most likely alone. <sighs> This was the decade of the lonely gamer. Games got better, but the gaming experience got worse. As a brief aside, this wasn't true in Japan. Arcades continued to thrive. There's a great book about it by Brian Ashcraft. There's a link for it in the description. But that didn't mean that gamers didn't want to connect with each other. When broadband became more common in the early 2000s, social play flourished. And when YouTube came on the scene, there was an easy, inexpensive place to enjoy games together. Let's play channels that earn the arcade atmosphere and creates a real community for gamers. We subscribe to our favorite channels. We engage in discussions with other gamers, and we share moments of terror and joy with millions of other people. And that's why Let's Play is so huge. Gamers spent a decade in isolation, and Let's Play videos have reinvigorated that sense of community. So what do you think? Why are Let's Play videos so huge? Hash it out in the comments, and if you like what you saw, please subscribe. I'll be here every week. Last week we talked about Mario, Link, and Sonic. Let's see what you had to say. Some of you astutely noticed that we accidentally replaced Marcus Phoenix with Dom and Solid Snake with Big Boss. Our apologies, first episode, we're still working out the kinks. The importer points out that Sonic, Link, and Mario are actually more like mascots, like Mickey Mouse. I mean, who's watched a Mickey Mouse cartoon lately? We may not even need to make games with them anymore. It's a great, great point. So SamG2000 points out that more recent games like Skyrim and Journey follow the hero's journey to a T. First of all, those games sold well, so coincidence? I don't think so. So, and second of all, meet me in 100 years and we'll find out. I See the Knights makes a bid for Pokemon. I think that that's a great, great suggestion. It might be a generational thing though, but yeah, again, great suggestion. Thanks so much for the comment. My favorite comment of the week comes from Kachika Chuck, who points out that characters may be on the way out and are being replaced by things like avatars, where you customize them and make them yourself. It's a great, great observation. I don't think that the hero's journey as a concept is gonna disappear, but I do think its expression might change over time. So the spam bot, my love to Tony, and thanks so much for loving my ironical video. PDR Laguna thinks that Mar 
scenario doesn't fit. Bold, bold claim, my friend. Well, Joseph Campbell didn't say that every single story has to fit the model myth to a T, so there might be parts of it that Mario doesn't necessarily fit. But I do think there's a really strong case to be made that you'll find all those elements there. You gotta remember also that these are video games, right? So elements of the model myth might be something that you do. So you might take on the refusal of a call. It just makes things a little bit different. Mike Regnetto from Idea Channel. Great show, you should check it out. Nice to meet you, Mike. Mike writes in, he thinks that part of the reason that these characters survived as opposed to other ones is the fact that video games were targeting young boys during that time period. Um, it's no big secret that video games during its early life targeted young boys. And I think you're totally right. And in fact, that might be part of the reason why characters like Samus, who do fit the hero's journey, didn't endure the same way that those characters do. So I think it's an excellent point. Um, obviously, you know, demographics often play into these decisions, but the hope is over time that the values of these characters will sort of transcend gender and will be something that everybody likes to play. And finally, Tiago Silva wants a cookie. You got it, boss. We're here to please. Send a self-addressed stamp envelope to this address.